welcome to Mickey Dicky. Learn as an engineer, teach as an champion. I would like to thank my family for their continuous support for making these kinds of technical videos in the public domain as well as I would like to thank my mentor Professor R. Surendran from Government College of Technology Coimbatore and I would like to thank Almighty my God for making my health good for sharing these kinds of technical knowledge over the world. Today's topic is shear force and bending moment. Okay, the shear force and bending moment slope and deflections or comes in the type of a beams. Most of our structures are either a beam or a column. We for the calculation purpose we consider most of the conditions as the beams and columns in the static condition. Here we have a types of beams. One is the statically determinant beam and another one is the statically indeterminant beam. What is the difference between the statically determinant and the statically indeterminant is? In the statically determinant beams, the support reactions can be calculated by means of equilibrium condition alone. For satisfying these condition, the cantilever beam, simply supported beam and overhanging beam will give a, will, can be calculated the support reactions by means of an equilibrium conditions. Whereas, in statically indeterminate beam, the support reaction can be calculated by means of both equilibrium condition as well as deformation relation. Here, we have a two relations for finding one reaction. That is why these beams are called as statically indeterminate beams. The beams are followed. One is proper cantilever beam. Second one is the fixed beam. Third one is the continuous beam. And next, the type of loading subject uh, are subjected in the beams are concentrated or point load, uniformly distributed load, uniformly varying load. Okay, the first thing, what is meant by shear force diagram? What is meant by bending moment diagram? Here, we first we want to know what is meant by a shear force. Shear force at the cross section of a beam may be defined as the algebraic sum of all the forces on either side of the section that is called as shear force. We can simply say it as a shear force that load or a point load acting at the particular section of a beam. Okay, what is meant by a bending moment? The bending moment we know that at the section of a beam may be defined as the algebraic sum of all moment moments of a forces on either side of the section. We know that moment is equal to force into perpendicular direction, perpendicular distance, force into perpendicular distance, the shear force into perpendicular distance to the support is called as a bending moment. Okay, and next the slope and deflection different types of beams and different type of loading condition the free body diagram on on the left and the red indicates the maximum bending moment and the blue indicates sorry black indicates slope and green indicates the deflection first one is cantilever beam this is the free body diagram of a cantilever beam subjected to a point load of p or w at the end where the maximum bending moment is equal to w into l the slope theta is equal to w l square by 2 e i first i will give I'm, I'm going to give a complete description for the cantilever beam and i would like to give a tip how to remember this and the deflection is delta is equal to w l cube divided by 3 e i and the cantilever beam subjected to uniformly distributed load of w per meter length is the maximum bending moment is equal to W L by 2. Here capital W indicates W into L. Whereas in terms of a small w, small w is the rate of loading that is load per 
meter length whereas a capital W is the load okay uh, make the difference small w l square divided by 2 that is why because of the capital w and small w we have a two different formulas uh, stating you, you can get a uh, l power value is changing uh, nothing else is changing okay theta is equal to w l cube divided by 6 ei and delta is equal to w l power 4 divided by 8 ei and for the capital w theta is equal to w l square by 6 ei and delta is equal to w l cube divided by 8 ei if the cantilever beam subjected to moment at the end the maximum bending moment is m and the slope is m l by ei and the delta is equal to m l square divided by 2 ei here you can easily remember that if the cantilever beam is subjected to a point load what the power value in the L square is come in the denominator you can see for the uh, slope and deflection the L having square the uh, slope and the denominator having 2 the deflection L having cube and uh, denominator having 3 whereas for the uniformly distributed load if the power of L having 3, 3 into 2 is equal to 6. And if you having a 4, 4 into 2, it is 8. Likewise, you can remember that. And for the theta, it is very simple. Uh, the deflection as like as a slope of the cantilever beam. And theta is come with the ML by A. Next, we go with the a simply supported beam simply supported beam with three conditions one is point load at midsection another one is eccentric point load and the third one is uniformly distributed load over the section first thing the maximum bending moment is for the simply supported beam carrying point load at center w l by 4 where the slope is equal to w l square by 16 ei and deflection delta is equal to w l cube divided by 48 ei whereas the eccentric load is acting the maximum bending moment m is equal to w into a into l w into a into b divided by l next for the simply supported beam of uniformly distributed load over all the beam here also small w and capital w is coming to picture capital w is equal to small w into l where small w is the rate of loading that is capital w by l okay therefore small w is equal to l square by 8 is the maximum bending moment and the slope is the theta is equal to small w l square divided by 24 ei and delta is equal to 5 into small w l power 4 divided by 384 ei whereas inst instead of small w we add uh, capital w by l that is equal to m max is equal to w l by 8 and theta is equal to w l cube divided by 24 ei and delta is equal to 5 by 384 w l cube divided by 3 ei okay the next one for the fixed beam for the fixed beam fixed beam is carried with a point load at the center the maximum bending moment is equal to w l by 8 here i would like to quote an interesting thing the for the fixed beam we are taking uh, we are assuming it is it is a, it is like a simply supported beam uh, for finding the maximum bending moment as well as the deflections for that sake the fixed beam of the point load at the mid section the maximum bending moment is wl by 8 yes similar to the simply supported beam and here it is the fixed beam therefore the slope is zero at any condition the slope becomes zero whereas delta is the deflection of the beam 
W L cube divided by 192 E I. Whereas fixed beam is subjected to uniformly distributed load. The M max is W L square by 12. It is general and M max it is the end condition. The M max at the center is W L square divided by 24. Here the maximum bending moment is maximum at the center of the beam sorry maximum at the end of the section and minimum of, at the center position as well as theta is equal to 0 delta is equal to w l cube divided by 384 ei next we are going to discuss shear force and bending moment diagram for the different conditions are postulated here for the uh, simple cantilever beam at load at end means the shear force diagram will come in as a rectangle and the bending moment diagram is come in triangle. I would like to quote here for the simple remembrance we know that in the mathematical formula for differentiating the rectangle area of rectangle we get a area of triangle that means when we differentiate rectangle when we differentiate rectangle we get a triangle when we differentiate triangle we get a formula of parabola okay if we add as a parabola if we differentiate that it comes with the cubic parabola with this general note here i would like to add if the shear force diagram is a rectangle bending moment is the differentiation of a shear force diagram therefore it is come in a triangle whereas for the cantilever beam supported with uh, uniformly distributed load for the or the length is the shear force diagram come in a triangular form whereas the shear force diagram is in triangle the bending moment diagram should be a par parabola here both shear force and bending moment in fourth quadrant therefore both shear force and bending moment in fourth quadrant in cantilever beam free end is always zero Please make a note this cantilever beam bending moment at free end is always zero. If the whatever may be the loading condition, it is always zero. You can see the cantilever beam subjected to uniformly varying load. Uniformly varying load. The intensity is maximum at the fixed end and zero at the free end. Where the shear force diagram is come in, uh, come as a parabola. If we differentiate the parabola, we get a cubic parabola in bending moment diagram. Next one is the simply supported beam. Simply supported beam of point load at the center. Here, the simply supported beam, the end reactions are coming to picture and it having a both positive and negative sign in this air force diagram. Here, you want to know that where the shear force is changing the sign or where the shear force is zero at the point the bending moment is maximum whatever may be the case you can see that uh, wherever the shear force is zero at that point the bending moment is maximum so that is the interest in the shear force and bending moment diagram of a simply supported beam okay uh, so with this background, I would like to go with the simply supported beam with point load at the center. The shear force diagram is in the both positive and negative sign. It is like a, when it is a point load, it is a rectangle in the shear force diagram. And if the rectangle in shear force diagram, we know that the bending moment diagram is supposed to be a triangle. Whereas the eccentric load, uh, we know that the having it is a point load point eccentric load so shear force diagram is a rectangle and the bending moment diagram is the triangle where if the simply supported beam having uniformly distributed load over the length the shear force diagram is a two inverted uh, two right angle triangles one is in the positive sign and the another one is in the negative sign if the shear force diagram is triangle then the bending moment diagram is a parabola this is not a circle this is a parabola 
and also the simply supported beam carrying uniformly varying load zero at the support and maximum at the center of the beam here the simply support uh, shear force diagram is in the both positive and negative sign therefore therefore the shear force diagram is in a parabolic shape so the bending moment diagram is in cubic parabola shape so this condition this is the condition for the simply supported beam acting uniformly varying load zero at one support and maximum at the another support shear force diagram is in parabola and bending moment diagram is in cubic parabola here we have to remember certain points uh, points to remember the bending moment is maximum where the shear force diagram changes the sign from positive to negative that you have to clearly know that and the bending moment is maximum at a point where shear force is zero okay this is a important thing wherever the bending moment is maximum at that point the shear force is zero and if you see wherever the bending moment is zero there is no condition for the shear force becomes maximum okay this you have to know if the bending moment changes the sign if the bending moment changes changes the sign generally it is called as a point of counterflexion or point of inflation or a point of virtual hinge it is generally occurring in the overhanging beam and also in the fixed beam statically determined section the uniformly dis, uh, overhanging beam having a uh, will come with the bending moment sign changes where the point of counterflexion is coming to picture next the rate of the change of rate of change in the bending moment is equal to shear force at the section this you have to know the rate of change of bending moment at the section is equal to shear force at the section therefore dm by dx is equal to v where v is the shear force m is the bending moment the rate of change of shear force is equal to the intensity of the load rate of change of shear force is equal to intensity of load therefore dv by dx is equal to minus w okay next is the strain energy strain energy of the bending ub is equal to half m into phi where m is the bending moment and phi is the uh, deflection phi is the deflection therefore then we know that for the deflection we have a formulas therefore half into m into m l divided by e i therefore m square l divided by 2 e i therefore we can say it as a sigma b the whole square divided by 6 e into volume sigma b is the bending stress and e is the ings more or less and v is the volume here you have to know that wherever the e and i are combined it is called as a fluctual rigidity it gives the strength of the beam in bending okay fluctual rigidity or the strength of a component in bending it is called as a fluctual rigidity whereas gj or cj wherever the c and j are coming it is called as a torsional rigidity that means that the component is very strong in shear stress or shear force next is the is the strain energy in variable bending that is ub is equal to 1 by ei integral of em into dx next an important point on the shear force and bending moment diagram we have a different cases case 1 if the shear force diagram is a rectangle the bending moment diagram becomes triangle case 2 the shear force diagram is a triangle bending moment diagram is becomes parabola case 3 is the shear force diagram is parabola then bending moment diagram is a cubic parabola this we have to know next is the different approach different approach of the simply supported beam having uniformly varying load one end is maximum another end is zero we have a cubic parabola of shear force diagram 
sorry parabola of shear force diagram and cubic parabola of bending moment diagram so this is for your understanding so shear force diagram is a right upper negative region load is the right upper negative region and uh, rdp is the right down words po uh, positive and lup is the left upward positive ldn is the left downward negative so this by this thing also we can remember this air force and bending moment diagrams next it is a important thing methods to determine slope and deflection methods to determine slope and deflection there is a five different methods one is a moment area method and double integration method these two methods are used for single load application okay for the single load application the mccallum method it is for a several load or a complex or a discontinuous load applications for a complex beam we, we go with the mccallum method the mccallum method it is for the several or a complex or a discontinuous load wherever the beam it is subjected to combined bending and combined uniformly varying load or uniformly distributed load with the point load we can go with the mccallum method since it is a complex structure the mccallum method will give a exact result of slope and deflection for different kinds of loads next is a conjugate beam method here uh, flexural rigidity for the non uniform flexural rigidity beams we can use a conjugate method and last one is the strain energy method the next we are having free body diagram of cantilever beam with uniformly varying load i have missed the diagrams in, the, in previous topic that is why i given differently first one the cantilever beam with uniformly varying load the maximum bending moment is equal to w l square by 6 the slope is wl square by 24 ei and the deflection is wl cube divided by 30 ei if the cantilever beam the fixed end is zero and free end is having maximum varying load is the bending moment diagram maximum bending moment m is equal to wl square by 3 and theta is equal to uh, slope is equal to zero and deflection is equal to 11 by 120 wl cube divided by ei next a simply supported beam carrying moment at the center the maximum bending moment is equal to m by 2 and theta is equal to ml by 2a and delta is equal to ml squared divided by 80a where the simply supported beam having uniformly varying load maximum at the center and minimum at the zero therefore maximum bending moment m is equal to wl squared by 12 and theta is equal to zero and delta is equal to 2.5 W L power four divided by three eighty four E I, or this is this W is capital W. We can say in a small W, uh, two point five small W L cube divided by three eighty four E I. That is all about the slope deflection and the shear force and bending moment diagram in the beams. I hope that you have all enjoyed the video and you will get uh, sufficient knowledge in the shear force and bending moment diagram and the slope and deflection. i would like to thank all my subscribers and followers for their continuous support let's share the content and share the technical knowledge just subscribe if you have any doubts let me know in the comment section thank you